In this lecture, we'll focus especially on a design argument by William Paley. Uh, he has a famous passage where he discusses walking across a field and finding a watch there. And uh, if you pick up the watch and look at it, surely you think that this has its origin in one or more intelligent designers. And so he says, well, similarly, if you look at the whole universe, um, doesn't it equally well seem to demand that we infer that this had an intelligent origin. So in the crudest form, a design argument is that the universe seems designed and therefore probably it had a designer. As we'll see, it gets a bit more complicated than that. And in this lecture, we'll look at Paley's argument, but also an argument based on analogy that's been discussed a lot by philosophers. We unfortunately won't cover fine-tuning arguments, which are really interesting but it takes a lot of uh, development to explain fine-tuning design arguments and uh, we just aren't going to cover it in this course but uh, there's a very interesting literature out there on that which I recommend. So you can call all of these arguments teleological arguments and sometimes sources do categorize in this way. This comes from the Greek word telos which means the end, in other words, like the goal you're trying to reach, or the purpose for which you're doing something. And so these arguments are, um, they don't just start from some intuition or from analyzing some concept like, the, like ontological arguments do. They start from some observed feature of the cosmos. And in this case, the observed feature is that things appear designed and they closely resemble things that we know are designed. So you have all these intricate parts, say, of a human body, and they all work together in a very interesting way. And uh, you have things like, say, the circulatory system, with many parts put together just so uh, to serve a certain purpose, it looks like. And so don't we have to think that, say, the human circulatory system was designed by one or more intelligent beings. And who could that be but God? That's kind of the argument. I mean, that, that's the basic line of thought. These arguments have always been popular. Uh, they were discussed in ancient Greek times by many people. And one interesting thing about them is these arguments seem to be presupposed in certain uh, scriptural sources in the great monotheistic religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Here's one passage which I'll let you pause the video and read through. So this is not an argument. Um, it's from a psalm, which is a song, basically a poem uh, addressed to God or and about God. And um, But it does seem to suppose that there is knowledge about God, which is based on observing uh, things in God's creation, things in the cosmos. So, you know, it's consistent with the design argument. It kind of suggests a design argument, even though it's not a philosophical source exactly. Now, one thing about this whole topic is it's really, in my opinion, been much poisoned by polemics. Uh, a polemic is an argumentative source which is just trying to humiliate the other side. Clearly these other people are stupid. Um, a polemic is usually unfair and pointed and doesn't weigh arguments carefully. Right, so it's Jesus versus Darwin. Looks like Jesus is about to punch Darwin right in the head. And Darwin's going for the eyes. He's fighting dirty here. Um, if you look at the internet, it's full of this stuff. There's a lot of literature uh, from Christian sources and Muslim sources and from uh, naturalist sources which is really in my view not very helpful and so I'm going to give some in the attempt to be helpful I'm going to give some definitions here uh, and then I'm going to talk about how these different claims are related to one another logically and I think this will be helpful um, in terms of what we're going to do in the lecture today and also as you just continue to think about these things. I think it's it's good to make certain distinctions and to reason carefully. 
So monotheism is there's exactly one perfect free creator of the cosmos. Notice I've put the first letter M in bold. That's because I'm going to use the abbreviation M for this view in just a minute. And then we have naturalism. The things which would be described by a perfect physics are the only things which have been, are, or will be. And I'm going to abbreviate that as N. And then we have a thesis of intelligent design. This isn't an overarching worldview, but it's a like those first two, but it's a hypothesis um, about living things on the earth. It says all living things on earth have been intelligently designed and created by at least one very intelligent agent. We'll call that I. And this is a bit different than the notorious, the famous thesis of young earth creationism, which has been much discussed in the 20th century. This is the view that the Earth is less than 10,000 years old. That's based on trying to extrapolate back when uh, God created the heavens and the Earth based on the genealogical records that are in the Bible. This view is that Genesis 1 and 2 are true, interpreted literally. So if you're a Muslim, you would just maybe say, hey, God specially created things by his miraculous power some time ago. Uh, there are Muslims who believe uh, in a literal first man and woman that were specially created. Uh, thirdly, uh, species begin almost simultaneously within a span of six days. And there is no common ancestry between species. All were directly created by God. So you, uh, the human race is not related to any sort of ape, much less um, you know, anything like an octopus or a fish or a petunia. That's young earth creationism. And then we have a theory, uh, the theory of evolution. Um, this is, again, it's not a, a world view. Uh, it's an empirical scientific theory, as Darwin said, about the origin of the various species that we observe here. And so the thesis um, assumes that the cosmos and the earth are very old and uh, there there's powerful evidence for that thesis about the, the earth being very old from other branches of science outside of biology uh, more specifically evolution has two parts one part is that all current species have derived from previous ones previous species by processes of natural selection and genetic mutation Basically, things reproduce. When they do so, there are variations in their offspring. Some of the offspring are more fit to survive than others. The ones that are fit to survive uh, are more able to spread their genes through the populace, and so the whole, um, the whole population shifts over time, and species come and go. Uh, and then it assumes um, common descent that all living things are related. There's a big tree of life. Uh, if we had better knowledge, we could completely fill out how all different species at all different times are related to one another. Okay, now how are these logically related? Everything on this thumbs up slide I'm giving you are claims that I say are true. I say they're obviously true if you're just careful and pay close attention to the definitions. So first off, if and I'm using just two logical symbols here, I'm using the arrow for if then and I'm using the the minus symbol to mean not. It's not the case that it's the opposite of of a certain thesis. So if monotheism is true, then it's not the case that naturalism is true. So if monotheism is true, then naturalism is false. Right, because monotheism posits a being which is the source of everything else, which isn't a physical being. And also, if naturalism is true, then monotheism is false. Right? Right. Can't hold both. If evolution is true, then young earth creationism is false. Right? And conversely, if young earth creationism is true, then evolution is false.
here's where we get into some things that I think are often overlooked. Um, clearly, if young Earth is creationism is true, then monotheism is also true, right? So th y implies m. That's right. And m implies i. If monotheism is true, then the thesis of intelligent design is true. I don't think things go the other way, by the way, as I'll explain in a second. Um, and if young earth creationism is true, then of course uh, intelligent design is true. Things have come from uh, at least one intelligent agent, if they were created specially by God 7,000 years ago, or whenever. Now here are some some uh, things that do not follow. So they are not these aren't cases of dance fail, they're cases of inference fail. And uh, some of these are a bit controversial, but I don't think they should be. I think there's some sloppy thinking on this. Um, if monotheism is true, does it follow that young earth creationism is true? No. Not at all. Go back and look at the definition of monotheism. There's nothing about young earth creationism there. There have always been Christians and Jews who interpreted Genesis 1 and 2 uh, in a non-literal fashion and thought they're true in what they teach, but uh, that they're not to be uh, taken as giving the literal means by which God created the human race. How about this? If monotheism is true, does it follow that evolution is false? No, look, how could it? Evolution is just a, the a thesis about the origin of species, that they arose over a long course of time, that this was due to differ differences or variances in uh, what kind of offspring were produced, and there's the tree of life idea. Right, where is there in all that that... Uh, sorry, sorry, monotheism do doesn't imply that any of that's false, right? Again, intelligent design does this imply monotheism? No, it doesn't. There have uh, there have been ideas that uh, aliens seeded life. That there were little green men that came uh, and got life going. And so life on Earth does result from intelligent design. But then maybe the little green men left and just unguided evolution took over. This has been seriously proposed. Um, and so this is, by people who have read the literature, this is somewhat widely known. Intelligent design by itself is consistent with monotheism, but it doesn't imply that monotheism is true. Does intelligent design imply that evolution is false? No, it doesn't. Things uh, may have come into existence because of the intentions and actions of one or more intelligent beings, and yet the way this occurred um, is the way that evolutionary theory describes. If naturalism is true, does it follow that intelligent design is false? No, it doesn't. And I already said why. There's this, there's this thesis of... Uh, aliens, right? So if, if, if that's true, then intelligent design might also be true. Um, again, if evolution is true, does this imply that naturalism is true? No, arguably not. Uh, I've seen philosophers argue this both ways, but I side with the ones who deny this. Again, evolution is just a, a scientific empirical hypothesis based on what we observe about species How's it going to follow that this um, that, that that this metaphysical thesis of naturalism is true? That goes far beyond what we observe. Um, does evolution imply that monotheism is false? Again, I would say no. Evolution, as defined, uh, is con consistent with both naturalism and with uh, monotheism. I think there's some confusion here about random. People say um, evolution involves random changes in uh, 
in uh, offspring, there, there's random mutation of genes. And yeah, it's random in the sense that uh, it's r irregular statistically in its occurrence, but there's no reason to assume that it's random in some deep metaphysical sense. In other words, it doesn't reflect the purposes of any intelligent being whatever. Um, again, that's going far beyond observation to philosophy. Okay, well, great. What's the point of all this so far? Well, we'll look at the, the point in the next segment.